Hey guys, welcome back to Flatpak Effects. Now in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make this interesting looking timeline animation. And I'm gonna show you how to do this step by step, but then I'm gonna show you an easy way to actually do this in a much faster way. So before we begin, there's a couple of things that you're going to need. You're going to need some various graphic assets. I've picked out a couple here, which are basically just images. So they're in a similar sort of style and they're also from the same sort of London or English sort of theme that I've went with. So whatever your design is going to be, make sure that they all kind of are of a similar style and match. Where I actually sourced a lot of these and a great place to get a lot of this stuff is from Envato Elements. And they just have a ton of these different graphic elements. The other great thing is they're all Illustrator files that I've downloaded. So this is great because I can open up Illustrator and I can just basically turn off the background layer. Say I didn't want this, I just wanted to isolate an element. And when I go back to After Effects, I, it automatically basically updates the files that I'm working with. This same thing also works with Photoshop files. So if you're using a Photoshop file, you can do the exact same thing. You can have it open in Photoshop and be working on it in After Effects. When you save it in Photoshop, it automatically updates inside of After Effects. Now, the first thing that I did was I created a new composition here. The other thing I also did was I created another composition, but this one I made square. So I called it 1920 by 1920. And I used this composition to basically just help create the basis of my animation. So I just created here a new sort of circular solid that basically just sits in the middle of my screen like this. And I can just pick an image that I'm going to use as my a background. So I'm just gonna drag in one here and roughly kind of position it somewhere where I need it to be. Now, to get it to bend, we use the warp effect. So you can basically search for the warp effect up here by just searching for warp, and then you can just basically drag it onto your layer. I've made sure it's selected as an arc, it's horizontal, and I can set my bend, basically the width of how much you want it to arc around and then kind of position it here to kind of sit around this layer. You don't need that circle there, but it just helps to basically try and create a edge to our animation. Then what I did was I could basically just duplicate this and then just rotate it around to create a second half. Just kind of position this somewhere up here to kind of line up with that layer. Now what I can do is if I grab my pen tool, I'm drawing a mask not on the bend, but on the original shape layer. So you can see the shape layer sits here. So I need to draw a mask which sits there. When I adjust this mask, you can see it's adjusting on that timeline. So what I can do is basically just position this here, add a little bit of mask feather to this. You could obviously create your own graphic that's a lot wider and you wouldn't have to do this. You could just create a really long composition and then just bend that composition around. But this is essentially how I did mine. Once I had one layer, what I could do is just pre-compose that. So select those two layers, come up to layer and then down to pre-compose, move all of those attributes into a new layer. And I'm gonna call this one back so that I know I'm sort of keeping track of the various layers that I've got here. And then it's a matter of just repeating this process. So I'm going back to that comp four. I can drag in my next layers here. And for these ones, you wanna scale them down so that they kind of sit over the top of these two layers. And for these, you can basically just, again, scale them down. And I've just applied the same effect to them and done the exact same steps. I've applied the warp. For these ones, I'm also going to pre-compose those and call them middle. So we've got basically two different layers there. And then I'm just gonna add a third one as well. So I've created this cover, which sort of sits over the top of all of those images. Now you should have all of these three different compositions that are all the same dimensions, but the images are all scaled within that. So you've gone through the different images, scaled them down, and that's why it helps to have this one composition that you kind of align everything. We're gonna go back to our composition three, just copy all of those and paste them into that composition. So what we're gonna do is make them all 3D, 
And we're going to use this to basically separate those layers out in 3D space. So what I can do is if I go over here to my two view, I'm gonna grab my top layer and move this out. Grab my middle one, move that out as well. Might even move this front one out even further. And what you wanna do with these is hit S and scale them down. So you might need to adjust that position and then scale it down a little bit more to basically sit over the top. Do this again with this one, scale this down. So essentially we've got three different layers all layered in 3D space. And now you can add a background in. So what I've done is I've added this background image that I had from one of the images. I just separated its own file. It's just of these clouds here in the background. Position this in the background. Another thing you can also do is add a bit of a warp to that just to kind of help bend it around. And if you also hit R on the keyboard, you can bring up rotation keyframes, create a rotation keyframe so it sort of starts, you can see here, sort of rotating. And then as it moves along, it's sort of rotating in the background, creates an interesting sort of effect. And now what I'm going to do is create a controller which sits over the top. So I'm going to create a new null. I want these three layers now to follow that null. And I'm going to use this as my controller. So I want to hit a position keyframe here, make this 3D so that we can control the Z axis. And now we can really sort of move into that scene. Maybe bring this back a bit more, bring it down like this. So we're sort of really flying into that scene. And you can see we've kind of got this 3D parallax effect happening. Something else you can also do to help with that is also add a bit of drop shadow Maybe make this a bit less, give this a little bit of distance, soften this one up. Copy that, paste it onto the middle one. Maybe make this one a little bit more. Drop down the softness. And now we want to kind of have them rotating. So what we can do is again with that back layer, so that's that back image there, we want to add a rotation to that. So I'm going to bring up the rotation keyframes. Add a bit of Z rotation here. So maybe something like that. Add a little bit of rotation. I want my middle layer, if I hit R, I want to hit this and basically bring it back. I want to create a faster rotation here in the opposite direction. So I'm sort of bringing that up to the end. So it's something like this. And the front one we can either, you can add a little bit of rotation or just leave it. But you may also want to just adjust this one here just to sit over the top a bit better, hide that edge. So that's looking quite good at the moment, but I wanna really refine this movement. So what I'm going to do is also make this easy ease, and I wanna come in here to the graph editor, and I want to drag in on this end part here and scale this up. You can make sure that you're working in the edit speed graph, and that's going to basically smooth out that movement. Now, this is a massive part of creating animation, really making animations look good. And it's the difference between what beginners do by just kind of moving things in a linear fashion and what professionals would do to really make their animations super smooth and everything look really slick. If you want to learn more about this sort of stuff, I go into this in a much more detail and depth in my Animation Master course. There'll be a link down in the description. I run through all of this stuff in detail. I also show you over 50 different animations that you can create in that full course. And I walk you through, even if you're an absolute beginner, never used After Effects before, I walk you through from the absolute basics right through to creating some really cool animations and effects. So if you're interested in that, there'll be a link down in the description below. Now, something else that I also added over the top was I added another image. I also linked this one to my null. So I've got this image now that sits over the top, made that 3D. 
can scale this up. Bring this one to the front. So I really want to basically have it sticking out here. Scale this down. Maybe position this somewhere like that. Also create a position keyframe here and here for this layer so that I can kind of animate it up, scale it up slightly. Maybe add a little bit of easy ease on that one. You wanna hit this little button down here, which is the rasterize layer. It basically means that it's gonna have unlimited quality. So you're never gonna lose that quality the more and more you zoom into it. You can only do this with files that are basically either EPS or they're straight from Photoshop and Illustrator. And that's because they're vector-based images. So you can't just do this with a normal photo. You need a vector image, which is made up of these graphics and solids. And you can basically then infinitely zoom into it without losing quality. The other thing I also did was just turn on this and make sure that motion blurs on for all of those layers. Just makes it look a lot smoother and more interesting again and just adds a whole nother level to this animation. Now I've seen this animation been done a few times online. I thought it looked really cool. So that's why I wanted to make this tutorial, but there is a template that you can download, which I found on Envato Elements, basically it uses these same techniques to create this really cool animation. And you can just take parts out of it, whatever you need to use in your own creative project, but it'll also give you all the animation that's already been done. So you can basically just copy in and paste in your own elements and basically modify it to make it work for what you need. Envato Elements just has a ton of different After Effects templates. It it's something I've personally been using now for some time just because it saves a heap of time. This is a great example. We could create this from scratch or you could just go online, find a template on Envato, download it and then just modify it to meet your needs. That is a lot quicker than going through and animating everything from scratch. Now, if you also wanna check out Envato Elements for yourself, There'll be a link down in the description below and that'll give you 50% off when you sign up to an annual subscription. It also includes unlimited downloads across all of these different topics. So it pretty much covers everything you're going to need as a creative professional in this industry for your personal and even commercial projects. Now, one other thing that I added here in my original composition was I added these clouds here in the background. It just kind of gave it this another element to really make this animation stand out. I got these clouds from Envato Elements. I downloaded this pack here on screen. And all I did was I just brought them into After Effects. So I just dropped them in here. I made them 3D. So I could just drag another cloud layer in here. I can make it 3D and then just kind of scale it down to whatever I need. Now to get the position, I can just hit P and basically position it however I need over the layers. One other thing that I also did on that, if I just delete that one, is I also created some position keyframes here. So it sort of animates across and we get that movement of the clouds and all those different layers. This is just another element that sort of really makes this animation stand out. And again, I encourage you to add lots of different elements together. And this is how you're going to really make these animations look really cool is by layering everything together. So hopefully you've picked up a few things throughout this video. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. You can check out more videos over here on the side of screen. Thanks for watching guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.